Colonel, I have an update for you, sir. Private Johnson, this had better be good. I was just about to head out to that sleep study I was telling you about. I'm really hoping it helps improve my blood flow. Sir? Well, you know, just getting older and it takes me longer to get there. You know, if you get what I'm saying, Private? Uh, uh, uh. Jesus, I just don't want to rely on pills all my life. That's all I'm saying, Johnson. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I, I came down to tell you we got some real good intel on those druids of doom, sir. Jesus H. fucking Christ, Johnson. Why the hell didn't you say so? I tried to before you talked about boner pills. Well, what the hell is it? Ah, it's a cassette tape. I wanted to have a CD, but we're low on budget. It's a cassette, and apparently it's from the Mad with Power Festival. Jesus, these guys are fucking geeks. If only they were simply geeks. Well, play the fucking tape. You waiting for a goddamn invite, Private? Let's go. Akuna Matata, what a wonderful phrase. So much love and happiness. I, I feel like we're in the 70s. I gotta say, Dig Dug seems kind of like a BDSM kind of game. <laughs> if I had a pizza and it hit the floor, I would really contemplate just eating it off the floor. Everything's so clean. Sir, I gotta be honest. These guys seem like fucking idiots. Are you sure we should be monitoring them? Johnson, if you had any idea how powerful these two were, you wouldn't ask me that kind of fucking question with clothes on. Uh, they sound borderline illiterate, and I think the one guy breathes out of his fucking mouth. Even so, they've grown more powerful than I have ever realized. We've got to split these bastards up before they unite the genres. Is there anything else, Johnson? Uh, just this. Stay tight, stay buckled in, stay tuned up. Franny, day two, Mad the Power Festival, let's fucking go. Let's go, baby, let's go! stupid oh well, my god we're getting season two off the same way we started season one with a goddamn bang and droomies if you haven't already done so hit the like button sub subscribe to the show and head over to our instagram and follow i mean we just have tons of video coverage uh, some of the best heavy metal coverage you're going to get on the planet so don't think just fucking subscribe and join the coven here as we enter and kick off season two franny what up, my druid from another fluid? How the hell are you? Season two, good God almighty. I am so fucking jacked and ready for this, man. Uh, had a good long break, but you know what? I've been chomping at the bit to get back in this motherfucker and do this show with you, man. I mean, we took about, what, two months off this summer just to recharge our batteries, and it's been a super fun time, Minnesota. It's a fleeting time of the year this summer. You got to pack all the stuff in there, which is what we did. Um, you and I... In the off season here, we both have been just head over bars into mountain biking. Like we have full, full bore gotten into mountain biking and having the most fun. And we're kind of kicking around. A, I don't think we're ever going to do a second podcast, but if we did, you know, Franny's on his bike, I'm on my bike, maybe calling it the Druids of Room. We're also yeah. vacillating between that, maybe the spoke agenda. Um, but either way, all I know, <laughs> all I know. Mountain biking's so fun, but also public announcement disclaimer, if you're old as fuck like me, like, this is a dumb-ass hobby to try to get into. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's just a hard hobby to get into in the first place, man. It's kind of, uh, I don't want to say cost-restrictive, but it is, there's a lot of upfront costs to get into it, but, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. But once you get into it, it's a fucking fantastic hobby to get into. It's so much fun. I mean, it's messed up because, like, you need a bunch of money to do it, so you're probably middle-aged, but your body's also going to take tons of bumps that you're not prepared for. It's Franny, in the short season, I've already busted my gooch, and I'm not even joking. <laughs> yeah. I hyperextended my knee. It takes me, like, two days to recover from a reasonably moderate ride. And I thought, like, I was moderately fit. I thought I was pretty decently healthy. 
No, this shit has quickly made me realize I need like a life alert necklace around my head <laughs> anytime I get on that bike. And I'm sitting here icing my balls because I took such a shot on the front of that bar. Oh my but God. it's all been worth it. We've been we've been going off of jumps like Napoleon Dynamite. I'm watching Pedro ride down on his sick new bike, otherwise known as Franny's bike, which we like to call the Royale with cheese. Royale and we're taking with we're taking cheese. bumps. We're catching some air. We're old as fuck. And we've been mountain biking in the off season. And you know, also of course doing a little bit of camping. And I feel like, you know, we 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 claim that we're druids with some amount of wisdom, but the reality is we have quickly diverted into like dick and fart jokes rather quickly. So <laughs> I have to just say for a moment, I, I am a little bit proud of myself that this summer I was able to hit depths of meditation that I never knew were possible. I feel like I had an accidental kundalini awakening. And anytime I try to tell anybody about this, it's impossible not to sound like I'm on an acid trip. Um, so... <laughs> I'm not going to try to do it here, but I am going to tell you that root chakras go fucking hard. And even though I've I've busted up my gooch, I can tell you that if you get your root chakra going, you're going to feel that motherfucker pulsing as the energy <laughs> rises up your body. And you can imagine me camping, discovering this shit. I'm like, I need a guru. I need someone to walk me through this Hindu tradition so that I don't accidentally like astral project myself into like a porter potty into the future. <laughs> I know there's nothing really to say in response to this. I'm just, I, I've had a Kundalini. Like I tell someone I had a Kundalini awakening. They're like, I'm sorry. Like I've never had that before. It sounds like a food dish or something like that. Like what? Is that like a celiac? Is that like a gluten allergy? <laughs> so, but you know, just trying to get outside. I've also, um, even though mountain biking has become like my entire algorithm. And I think the same is probably oh true for you, Franny. Oh, hundred percent. Um, I also kayaked a little bit. Have you have you ki- have you dabbled, I dabbled in, in the kayaking? In the kayaking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I've kayaked a few times before. I don't have a a yak to myself per se, but yes, I definitely uh, kayaked, and it's definitely an upper body workout. That's for goddamn sure. With the kayaking and with the mountain biking, I'm about I'm about one additional hobby away from needing a Subaru. I was about to say you. I need a Subaru. You're dangerously close to that level right now. If you, if you get like a set of skis or a snowboard, you're fucked. A Subaru dealership is going to be calling you and being like, uh, "Sir, you have too many outdoor hobbies. Like you are legally required to own a Subaru at this point." Sir, you are a gainfully <laughs> employed man without children, and we see that you like being outside. You've had we've like we've heard you've had a Kundalini awakening. <laughs> it's about time for a Subaru, sir. But I've just been getting out there in the great outdoors, and kayaking is wild. It's a lot of fun. And another hobby, honestly, kayaking would be better for me to get into because, again, the the op- I mean, you can drown. You can fucking drown. Oh, yeah. But I don't feel like I'm going to, like, have all these opportunities to break shit on my body as I do with mountain biking. <laughs> I would agree to that. I mean, like, yeah, like you said, the worst that can happen is you drown or you flip over and get wet. Well, Franny, and this is the last – okay – a fairness and conversation act. This probably won't be the last time I talk about Kundalini, but Kundalini. <laughs> but I have to say, why am I bringing this up? Well, they say as part of that awakening, you will begin to manifest things. And on a ride home with Franny, I jokingly took over his voice text to his <laughs> wife and said he's he smashed his balls. And his wife believed that he sent that. She was all oh worried. My, oh my and God. who ends up smashing their balls? But me. <laughs> And that's only the first prophecy that's coming true this episode. So stick around because there's a major dark prophecy that 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 straight up druids. I'm scared. I manifested. So we're going to come back to that. But today is all about unpacking our Mad with Power Festival. When we last checked in with you, we were coming hot off the heels of the Milwaukee Metal Fest. That's right. And before we jump into that, there's just a couple of smaller shows I want to you know we're long-winded. You know your boys. We're trying to keep this shit brief. I want to <laughs> quickly call out a couple of the local shows we hit up before we launch in to Mad With Power proper. But Franny, we saw I Am, the darlings that launched this show. We saw I Am, we saw Toxic Holocaust, and Havoc. And Franny, I saw you doing your typical Gen Z shit at this show. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. First off, I, yeah, that I am and Toxic Holocaust uh, and Havoc show. Uh, uh, we'll get to that. 
But just that show in general was just so much fucking fun. I got to chat with a little bit while we were stuck in traffic. I saw the I Am Boys unloading and was like, rolled the window down and was saying what's up to them. So that was, uh, had a little micro conversation with them. And yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. But yeah, what's this Gen Z shit you're talking about? I have no idea this what Gen you're talking Z, about, this, bro. Only you would be shooting a fucking TikTok on top of the stage while the <laughs> band is trying to play. So head over to the Instagram. This motherfucker walks up on stage. He's getting like in their grill. He's like doing like an intimate interview with them while they're playing a set. And thank God they fucking just smiled it off. And Franny stage dives backwards, films it. And this is just shit that someone only like 27 to... 19 could do which i know you're right on that line but you're bringing that youthful energy that maniacal madman energy and that's why i say gen z because i don't even know how to do anything past instagram meanwhile you (laughs) are broadcasting to the world live streaming as you stage dive backwards (laughs) fucking outrageous oh oh my god that was so fun though yeah and the band was uh for havoc was such good sports when i went up there this the bassist especially man like he was just eating that shit up like i I ran up on stage and had the camera and he was just head banging and just smiling ear to ear the whole time oh man it was a good time. he looks so nice i know i wanted to like hang out with him afterwards and just like not even have a beer but just like you know go for a nice walk or something like that it was like, <laughs> his smile like a- just like fills you up with love oh yeah there's so much love i had to jump off the stage <laughs> yeah. you couldn't tolerate you had to fly to head over to the instagram and we have a lot of new videos getting posted from the mad with power festival so head over there uh i also I attended just uh, this weekend a nice little goth show with um, what I would say is the Twin Cities' best goth band, The Rope. You ever get a chance to check them out? If you if you like uh, Typo Negative, if you like Sisters of Mercy, or if you fuck with any of those bands, uh, Idle Hands, if you fuck with Idle Hands, formerly known as, um, or unto others, I should probably call them because, you know, that's the whole name change fiasco. If you like any gothic rock, check out The Rope and definitely check out Knox Novacula. Knox Novacula. Holy shit, a Seattle death rock is what they call themselves. I just hear goth rock, but my God, what a, a mesmerizing sort of band. I mean, imagine if vampires got into some like Dick Dale surf rock. That oh, kind wow. of a and, and the lead singer, she's she's like fully tatted up. Oh yeah, um, yeah. she's got like an upside down crucifix and on her thigh is like King Diamond tattooed to her leg. I mean, hell yeah. How fucking sick is that? That's fucking badass. You sent me videos of that uh, before you posted it. And I was like, this, this is fucking sick. And then I went to go check them out uh, while I was driving home from errands and stuff like that. Yeah, super, super awesome band. And I echo what you have to say. If you like anything like Unk to Others or anything like, or Typo Negative, 100%, definitely check these guys out because they're they're uh, right in the same vein. And uh, yeah, I, def- I definitely liked them. Almost some occult, like occult rock vibes too, 1970s occult yeah, rock yeah, vibes. Yeah. Um, I had, like, there's a few moments that almost hearken to the devil's blood. So any sort of witchy ethereal haunting vocalist like her well i i I, that'll just get into my blood so nox novacula i cannot endorse them enough they're officially one of the young bands i'm keeping my eyes on and um i i encourage yeah smash the like button on their music check on check it out so franny before we head into mad with power proper um i just want to say like i feel like i'm having sort of my own travel show emerge in my adventures <laughs> with fucking hotels and my adventures with heavy metal festivaling. Oh, so yeah. this is my, this is my Steve jobs, uh, travel guide brought to you by neck Wrecker, surviving <laughs> hotels that accommodate heavy metal fans. <laughs> so Franny, we think back to key West. Once upon a time, I told you about blood sheets. And after my experience, <laughs> After my experiences last weekend, I am dreaming of blood sheets of the simpler uh. times when all I had to worry about was the levels of hemoglobin on my thread counts. <laughs> <laughs> Things oh, were simpler fuck, for me dude. then. Ah, I, you know, and I'm not, I, I am certainly not well versed enough in litigation to know how safe it is to name drop them. So instead of using their name, I'm just going to say the hotel I stayed at was the Glooby Lurie. So, <laughs> so if you're in Madison, look for the Glooby Lurie. So 
<laughs> I'll just say this hotel is pretty historical. It's got some really cool architecture and it's got a solid, we don't give a fuck about your sleep vibe from the <laughs> second you walk in there. And I say this because they fucking greet you. I've never had this happen. They greet you with two drink tickets straight out of the gate. So what? like it's you fucking... get there, they're like, oh, we motherfucker, you're, you're staying here. You're an alcoholic. Here you go. Here's you're going to need tickets. these. You're going to need these to get some fucking sleep. I mean, I've been to, I've been to corporate events. I've been to work functions where you get a couple of drink tickets. I have yeah, never yeah. walked into a hotel before and been immediately greeted <laughs> with two free drinks. But <laughs> so that just sort of set. And I'm by the way, I'm I'm there with my fiance. I'm there with Chili Bob, and so we are. This is our. We're like having a little like romantic escape, even though we're here for this metal festival. So right when I see that, now there's a part of me that's like, oh, okay, they're they're giving giving us drinks right. Thank thanks, Gluby Larry, looking out for me, helping me get a little lubricated up here let's let's get this whole weekend off to the right start well we get into the room and i think it's normal for you to have fresh towels maybe a couple candies but on either side of the bed are two sets of earplugs and no for a moment i'm like okay this is really cool they probably got a lot of people from the festival they're just trying to be chill and get and look out for our hearing no i can say that those earplugs were standard for that room i was in and they are 100 there for a reason because Franny, this room is like situated directly above two bars on the bottom of the hotel. So you can imagine, you can imagine like things get a little wild and I'm thinking back to like, you know, those two drink tickets. And I got to say like the Glooby Lurie is on the whole, a great place to go if you want to black out. And, (laughs) you know, with the old architecture, it's like, yeah, you feel like you're time traveling to a different era, but you don't realize the time travel is because you have blacked out and lost track of time. (laughs) So, you know, it was a wild couple of nights. People were just hammered in the parking lot, getting crazy. Um, I will say, though, that if you do stay at the Glooby Lurie and you need a little bit, you need an environment that's a little bit less rowdy, a little bit more stable, two blocks away, I shit you not, is the mission. So you could walk down there, get yourself a bed, get yourself a cot at the mission, go get a good night's sleep. (laughs) Or maybe even a free food too. Maybe some free. God damn. <laughs> so, you know, there's people were tailgating. People were tailgating in the parking lot at my hotel. That's fucking I wild, saw man. Fully diapered three year olds getting overserved at 2 a.m. in the parking lot. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? I mean, they have us. I don't know. So it's like, come to the, come to the Glooby Lurie where we definitely look the other way. I feel like. For an extra 20 bucks, you can put cigarettes out on the concierge if that is your, if that's your prerogative, like whatever your pleasure is. They're selling it at the Glooby Lurie. And, um, oh you know, when I was, I'm obviously, I, I understood the assignment when I got there and I was handed two drink tickets. But, you know, I'm there with, with Chili Bob. I'm there with my fiance and we're trying to get some rest. So I asked them, like, you know, in my best non-Karen tone, is it possible we could maybe move to a different side of the hotel? Yeah. Nope. Uh, we can't do that for you because there's no one here after seven of authority. So we can't make that decision. But 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 re- remember how loud it is the next time you book. I'm like, damn, they just straight up told me to my what face. We don't give a the- we don't give a fuck about your sleep. <laughs> Go away. Oh, my God, dude. Holy shit. Fucking just crazy. Savage ass concierge, man. It's gangster. Gangster concierge work. And Sheesh. Just crazy. <laughs> anyway, so. You know, it just it just continues my 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 twenty year Druidic tradition of trying to get rest on the road, and it makes me have even more respect for like what bands go through because half the time they're sleeping in like a small tour bus or splitting you know um, splitting the cost of what would probably be a room not much better than where I stayed at. So you know the road is hard, and I had here I am on the cusp of forty trying to take care of my mountain biking body, barely getting any sleep, and somehow. <sighs> Bringing you tidings from the road, Franny. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, but you know what? At least your hotel was close to the venue, though, right? Am I right? You know, I, that's why we booked there. And I think considering that the entire goddamn joint was fans of Mad With Power, I think we all quickly understood, like, this is just a pl- This is like your dorm room. You're coming back here. Like, it's a flop house. Just be glad that the <laughs> yeah. ceiling isn't. I mean, the ceilings used to be just mesh wire and you could look into the room above you. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Be glad you got walls. We did that for you here at the Gluey. <laughs> oh, well, shit, man. Franny, I think you booked elsewhere. You got some decent sleep, and I didn't hear anything from you on that front. No, no, no. Yeah, we booked at the uh, Madison Concourse Hotel. 
a uh, very different experience from the uh, Glooby Lurie. Um, yeah, nice and quiet. Uh, 10th floor had a nice restaurant in there if we wanted to. The comfy bed, uh, the pillows were that of boulders, though, unfortunately. You had pillows? Yeah. God yeah. damn, what kind of nice ass place were you at? <laughs> I told you, man, the freaking Madison Concourse Hotel and Governor's Club. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely did not have the uh, same experience as you did. So um, I would, I, I will gladly do the $8 Uber trade off if that meant I got better good or sleep so well that's the that's the rub too a couple nights we took an uber back even though we were only like three blocks away because we just we're creatures of comfort me and chili bob so well franny let's let's move on to our topic du jour the mad with power festival uh otherwise known as the dawn of a dark prophecy and that's gonna come out again (laughs) later you'll know what that means on the surface this is the mad with power festival in reality it's the dawn of something sinister, something insidious, something that challenges me to my core. Ah, uh, Franny. Well, where do we start with this festival? I think the number one thing uh, you, you need to know if you're thinking about going to the Mad With Power Festival. Well, this is a power metal festival Absolutely. featuring uh, a, ver- a veritable cornucopia of retro video games. Yeah, indeed. I mean, there's tons of them all over this motherfucker. Like, wall to wall. Arcade cabinets, pinball machines, you name it, they got it. So I kind of respect, you know, this is very much a a niche festival, and we're very much a niche sort of show. So I like that they're catering, they know who their audience is, and they just go after it. Um, They're, you know, this this has all been put together by Ty Christian, who is the lead singer of the Lords of the Trident, uh, uh, Madison's own Lords of the Trident, which is also where this was held. And they're just a longtime power metal band who... They've been grinding away. They're sort of a DIY band. I've always respected that. And so Ty, Ty Christian, who put this together, he's really pulled in a crowd that I would kind of characterize as LARPers, as gamers, as unintentional celibates, um, but also as generally really nice and kind people. Yeah, I I agree, man. Like the whole vibe there the whole weekend was just... I did not catch, like, bad blood from, like, anybody at all. Like, everybody was just super chill, super nice. Like, that even reflected in the staff, too. Like, everybody was just so goddamn nice. It was it was, you know, it was off-putting, almost. Like, I wasn't prepared for the level of niceties, like, there. I mean, like, the, the, the Milwaukee Metal Fest, which I adored, was also very nice. But it still had an edge. It still had, like, some aggression. And, Absolutely. I mean, at this show, there was, I've never seen this amount of no contact moshing. Like, you would think, like, if Dr. Fauci was at this show, he'd be like, everyone's fine. There's no <laughs> worry about spread because no one's touching each other. No notes. <laughs> no, yeah, no masks needed here. If this is 2020, there's plenty of distance between everybody at this show. Um, yeah. But I saw everyone just really nice to each other. I learned that Man Bear Pig. Man Bear Pig is real, Man and he pig. has ADHD, <laughs> which I didn't expect. <laughs> this guy's walking around with a full ensemble. He's got like a bear head. He's got furs on, and I wanted to interview him. And I walk up to this guy, and I'm like, excuse, excuse me, Man Bear Pig. And I'm like, How, where do you get the energy to mush in a bear suit? And he just looked at me dead in the eyes like, oh, I have ADHD. And <laughs> what? Like I was planning to take like take the piss out of him a little bit and joke around, but he was so vulnerable that he instantly humanized himself. And I'm like, oh, I, I can't joke at all with. I'm like, oh, he he's like, I have ADHD. I'm like, oh, okay, well, good for that's awesome, dude. Like, I'm like the reason I'm sitting upstairs is I have low grade depression. So like we. <laughs> We just had like a nice little moment, but Man Bear Pig is real. He's out there and he's going to fucking power metal shows. And this, this crowd was so nice. There was, you know, there was basically a chorus line of headbanging, like 20 different metal heads, lock yeah. and step. I mean, if they were doing high kicks, you might as well put them in Reno. That's how synchronous, <laughs> that's the synchronicity we were dealing with. Um, but yeah, you know, just a great vibe. And Franny, the games, the fucking games. I let's, let's head to the floor. And take a little listen about the just the games and the vibes that we're talking about right now. Akuna Matata, what a wonderful <laughs> phrase. This has got to be one of the most inclusive metal shows I've seen, as there has been nary a mosh pit of violence. There has been nary a whiff of aggression. And there are... Uh, 
plentiful opportunities to play in 8-bit revelry. <laughs> Franny, have you tried any? Are you a double dragoner? Are you a Pac-Man? Or have you tried Mr. Do or Qbert? Have you played anything? Yeah, uh, I got some uh, dig dug in yesterday. I got uh, my ass kicked completely in Deadpool pinball by Mrs. Franny. I gotta say, Dig Dug seems kind of like a BDSM kind of game. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, to, to, to each his own, whatever floats your boat. Or Dig Dug's up to his elbow and pussy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> whatever tickles your pickle, baby, you know what I mean? Like, it's all good, man. As you said, this is the most inclusive metal fest ever. So much love and happiness. I, I feel like we're in the 70s, but with metal. <laughs> oh my god oh, Jesus you know, As I hear our voices it, uh, Even without any Any intoxication I'm like my god do we sound borderline Canadian Now you add a couple of drinks to the mix Oh We're yeah. from Saskatchewan We are yeah. on the furthest limits Of the Alaskan frontier Oh yeah basically Newfoundlers um, But gee, yeah man To, to kind of get back to the point of like the, the, Just the niceties in this motherfucker like And the like the no contact mosh pit uh, As we alluded to earlier I would go on a limb And say that pillow fights Would probably be more aggressive Than the mosh pitting that was happening here Like it was Oh you'd wild. have to get parental signatures On any sort of <laughs> pillow fight at this fucking thing There's no goddamn You would hit someone with a pillow And they would drop all their, their board game miniatures And look at you like how could you <laughs> Why would you do that? Yeah. Oh my god. And there was, but that's not to say there weren't some big boys in there. There's, I would say on the on the average, a plenty of big boys there. And so if they could oh, yeah. simply unlock and tap in, maybe through some kundalini work, if they could tap in to the the energy inside of them, as Man Bear Pig had so successfully done, then I think there might have been a little a little more contact. But you know, just this was at the Sylvie, so a, a rather newish venue, um, and. I, overall, I was really impressed with it. Uh, just a fine fucking establishment. Let's. Oh yeah. Let's. We were here with Might House, and going back to our season finale, you know, Might House rides with us a lot. He may be. He's a druid, even if he's not on the show. But Might House rode with us. I always like to capture his thoughts and put a mic in his face and watch him shit his pants for a brief moment. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Let's head to the floor and hear me asking Might House his thoughts on the Sylvie Club. My house, what would you so we're at the Sylvie Club here in Madison. What would you say about this club, which I understand is a relatively new club? What's your Yelp review? <laughs> My Yelp review uh, out of five, I'd give it about a four and a half. As compared to, say, a First Avenue, what would you say for our Twin Cities denizens of heavy metal thinking of visiting Madison? So if we're comparing this to First Avenue, I'd say it's much larger. It definitely has the feel of a grand venue. You feel kind of small when you're on the floor. When you're up in the balcony, it doesn't feel like it's exactly this large. How clutch has a larger venue been for an on average larger fan here <laughs> at the Mad with Power Festival? <laughs> like I said, on the floor, it makes I feel a little small in comparison to this whole venue. Just looking around. A rare moment, aside from stepping inside a porter potty where Might House actually feels confined by the space around him. And let me just say, let the record show that these are some of the highest class urinals, highest class fucking stalls one could shit in. Franny, what say you? Uh, I would have to agree, you know, going back to concert survival guides where you gotta tuck your shoelaces in. I don't know if I really have to worry about that here because everything's so goddamn clean. If I had a pizza and it hit the floor, I would really contemplate just eating it off the floor. Everything's so clean. <laughs> oh shit. Just fucking so classic. If I had a pizza, I'd eat it off the floor. <laughs> Franny in his he's oh. in the pocket. I just can't stop listening to that. Oh, and it was just I mean, there's despite wanting to have a little Caesars off the toilet rim, uh, Franny is not being hyperbolic. It's as nice of a club as you can find. The Sylvie and Madison was absolutely a professional, nice venue. But that first night, man, they did not have that sound totally corrected. No, 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 no. It was about 50 degrees in there that first night. So they, I don't know, man, they they eventually got their shit figured out. Um, 
And by the end of it, I'll honestly give them a solid A minus sort of grade uh, in terms of a club, in terms of execution. I think it's I think it's a great venue overall. A hundred percent. Yeah. Touch on the sound. Yeah. God, like you would need earplugs before you even got in the venue like that first day. It was so loud. It was so insanely loud. But yeah, they did end up getting it dialed in afterwards. Um, And I'd have to agree with you from execution to staff to everything else. Yeah, I'd give it a solid A for sure. If I had a pizza, (laughs) if in that moment I could have had a goddamn pizza, I I truly do believe. Well, Franny slammed down the ground. You know, they, they, if you're thinking of going, if you're thinking of going to the mad with power festival, you need to know there are, there's definitely a cast system inside of this festival. And what I mean by that is there is a tiered ticketing system. So if you want to go upstairs and sit, that's going to cost you a little bit more money. And if you want to go sit all the way on the top floor and literally piss on the people on the main floor, that'll also cost you a little bit more. So, you know, we were up on that second floor resting our dogs as needed, looking down on all of you greasy, degenerate, knuckle dragon Denny line cook hogs, sweating it up and greasing it up. And uh, Franny, what was Daddy your meat. what was your thoughts on the tier ticketing system? Um, well, I I don't know, I. I kind of slept on the the tiered ticketing, so uh, Mrs. Franny and I only got uh, you know uh, greasy sweat hog tickets to be in the pit. Um, but we did uh, sneak in to the second floor to to rest the dogs a little bit afterwards um, on the second day. It was it was nice. It was nice. the 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 second level balcony was nice. Um, I it was only pleasant. Caught, it was pleasant. It was pleasant. It was nice. Um, we only got a whiff of the debauchery that was happening upstairs. God only knows there was probably, you know, human oh, they had Illuminati masks on. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a fucking straight up seance. Uh, theosophists were up there <laughs> yeah. drinking adrenochrome chilled on ice. <laughs> yeah. Like sitting down, I thought I was a part of the elite. They just let me have a glimpse at the way they lived. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I yeah. was quickly, quickly taken aside and shown the back of the building and said, Hey kid, you look too long again. We're going to break your fucking ribs. <laughs> so I went, I said, yes, sir. I went back yeah. into the Sylvie. I shut up. <laughs> I didn't say anything again. I went back to playing video games. I didn't even look at him anymore. Um, but yeah, well, it, it was, it was nice. Um, I definitely think I'd probably get, uh, some seated tickets next time around, but for the most part, yeah, it was fine. Didn't have any problems with, the uh, standing and, you know, having my knees get busted out the whole time. All right, Franny. Well, we've we've yacked enough about the venue and the people and the video games. What 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 about the goddamn music? That's what we're here to talk about. So what about the music? Night one for me was all about fucking Power Glove, and I cannot believe that I'm walking away saying that. But Power Glove, I mean, they're now what twenty years old, and they have fo- somehow found a way to build a really solid career out of making metallic covers of mostly video game music, which is fucking remarkable. Like when I, when I looked at the bands at this festival, I'm pretty goddamn sure power glove pulls more streams than everybody. And it's not close. Oh man, dude. I, and the, Oh God, the thing that fucking pissed me off about power glove is I didn't get to see them. All right. Let me preface this guys. Uh, you know, as as all of you drew uh, Drewmies know that I work third shift, right? And I could not get off the night before, so I had to work eight hours overnight, go home, uh, catch like half hour of sleep, drive four hours, get to the hotel, check in, get another like forty five minutes of sleep, and then go to the concert. So I did like this whole first night running off of like adrenaline, uh, pure elation, and about an hour and fifteen minutes worth of sleep. So. Like, I got through most of the night, and, you know, right around when Power Glove was getting ready to take the stage, I just did not have it in me anymore. I went outside to catch a breather between bands, and I was fucking dead. I was dead to the world. I just could not take it anymore. Man, what a fucking shame. They were so fun, and they played, I mean, I'm shocked to say this, but they played a cover of Under the Sea, and... Oh my god. This crowd popped hard for it, myself included. After they played Under the Sea, if straight up, if they had made the executive decision to only do Disney covers, I actually think they would have <laughs> taken the roof off of that venue because they played Under the Sea. And 
I think with the age coupled with the nerdiness of the crowd all came together. I mean, there was, I just, I never, you never know what band's going to get over and in what way. Well, Power Glove, they were already crushing things when they played like the theme song from Tetris and they had uh, like a Super Mario cut. But when they went into Under the Sea, it was a high night of... The high moment of night one, and I say that after having just seen a band I actually covet and love and reach for a lot at home, which is Wilderun. Oh and my Wilderun, God. I think, so you were, you were even if you were a fucking zombie, you're doing the nod on the floor, you still caught Wilderun, and Franny, they blew me away. Um, just a, a different kind of folk metal, like a more authentic folk metal than, say, some of the earlier kind of Finnish or even Swedish sounds. I don't want to name anyone, but you know, like if it sounds like a nursery rhyme, I generally stay away from it at this point. Wilderun plays a lot more authentic sounding folk yep. metal. Yeah, I, I did get to catch Wilderun and yeah, a hundred percent agree with you, man. They, they just totally blew me away. I have listened to them a lot in the, uh, at home setting and first time seeing them live. And they just, they, they were so, so, so much fun. Um, I do have a video of me crowd surfing, uh, during will to run, uh, you know, keep an eye out on the Instagram channel that will get put up there. Um, Mrs. Can you know, I- Mrs. Franny got, a video of me crowd surfing while I'm videoing myself. It was just like the most meta shit ever. <laughs> like, the Franny, yeah, okay, we need to splice those together. Both your footage and her footage of you because I don't think people understand what a big cum shot your style of crowd surfing is. <laughs> like, you are up there like, oh, filming yourself. Everyone's getting such a kick out of it. But yeah, the Franny crowd surfing is such a fucking flex. And we're we're gonna definitely get that up within the neck before this episode drops. It's gonna be on there, so head over to Absolutely. fucking Instagram. But P- Franny, you know, for me, for me, this whole festival was about night fucking two, Yo. otherwise known as the High Spirits slash Seven Kingdoms uh, duel from hell, who both brought epic level heat, epic level crowd engagement. In the words of Franny, fucking wow. Wow, fucking wow. Yeah, holy crap, man. Night 2 was just insane. So much fun, so many great bands to cap off the night. Um it was just a lot a lot of fun. I mean, I got to see bands that I've been like, you know, really 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 wanting to see for a really long time finally getting to cross them off the bucket list. Everybody performed so well. Like from high spirits I mean, to the rest of the night, everybody performed just insanely well. Everybody was just in the pocket, hitting the, you know, right in the money zone. It was awesome. I, there was just such, we were riding such a high, waiting on high spirits. Let's go to the floor, night two, mad with power. Let's take a listen. Franny, mad with power, day two. You're like a frog in a slowly boiling pot of hot water, and I can see you from afar, sizzling with excitement. How the fuck are you doing? Oh! Uh, Oh, man, I'm doing real fucking good. Can't wait to see fucking Jesus. High Spirits, Seven Kingdoms, goddamn Hostess with the Mostess, Lords of the Trident, the ones who are putting this on. And, of course, we cannot forget, Unleash the fucking Archers, baby. Let's go. As you may have guessed, we've got a healthy buzz going. We just got done watching Grave Shadow absolutely rip shit up. And I got to say, they finally figured out the heat. They finally figured out the sound. And right now, I think we're at homeo fucking stasis in terms of buzz <laughs> management as we wait for the mighty high spirits to launch into their set. Franny, what the hell do you have to say for yourself regarding high spirits? They're fucking great. You told me about them way back when. And like I said, I've I just been really digging them ever since then. Um, I'm I think you've been slurping on some high spirits. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, it's a pretty low class beer, but uh, <laughs> a low class beer for a low class fan. <laughs> Day two, Mad with Power Festival. We're gonna check in with you after high spirits, and you know me, my house, Franny, and the company. We're here for Seven Kingdoms. Woo! <laughs> like my Ric Flair goodness. woo right at the end there, baby. That's what's up. <laughs> I, you, you, at this point, I think everyone's starting to get wise to the fact that we are vas- vacillating in and out of wrestling personas the second a drop of booze hits our lips. 
I mean, like, I instantly, you, you were turning a macho man, and I'm over I there. I can't wooing. help it, man. I know. Well, the cream was certainly rising to the top when it came to fucking... I mean, High Spirits is one of my favorite bands, and we were singing our asses off and rocking out, and um, lead singer uh, Chris Black, I want to say, of High Spirits. Boy, I should double-check that. Um, He was pointing at us. He was calling me out for singing so goddamn loud, and Franny... He threw, we were so in the mix and so hyped up, he threw two picks our way, you snatched them both, and motherfucker, you kept them both. (laughs) How could you? How the fuck? Oh my God, This motherfucker keeps both picks from like my favorite goddamn band. (laughs) And I want Droomies. That first pick was thrown literally straight at me. He snatched it from me like, you see these clips of women at ball games taking balls from kids? That's what Franny did to me at this show. Oh my God. It was the craziest thing ever. Yeah, you gloss over that, you motherfucker. I was barely paying attention and all of a sudden I see this, you know, white missile coming my way and as if I'm a Patriot missile defense system, just snatch that fucker right out of the air. I was protecting your eyeballs, okay? What Record. you weren't paying it, attention to was friendship. <laughs> Keeping up. You are co- the colonialist of this resource hoarding of the picks. Like, there's none for anyone else. They're all for me. A I'm low st- point. A low I point in Druids of Doom. Of, I'm starting to get a little bit, co- a little bit of a collection of, like, uh, concert memorabilia. Of stolen got, like, picks from Make-A-Wish kids? <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> I got, I'm coming for you on that pick. I'm not going to uh, let you forget this shit. I got two picks. I got like four drumsticks from all over, man. Yeah. You got 99 problems, but a pick ain't one. And I'm sitting over here strumming my guitar with a fucking quarter. I should have a high spirits. (laughs) Goddamn. (laughs) I'm going to get you. I'll never forgive this. You know what? I don't want to hear it, though. You have the height and reach advantage. It's not an excuse. And you were literally right behind me, man. You should have been able to snatch that. You stepped out in front of me. And snatched the fucking pick. I was in there with my hands in the air and like a free safety, you came across the top and you picked it off. You weren't protecting shit. Oh, shit. Fucking A, man. Well, after the goddamn... And he, by the way, you don't, folks, you don't hear any hint that he's going to give me one of these. He's not even... He's like, yep, these are my picks. I'm framing them. Well... Motherfucker, Seven Kingdoms. We, I loved High Spirits. Okay, I'm crushed. But Seven Kingdoms, uh, they came on next, and we've got a long history with Seven Kingdoms. Um, I think we were man. both equal parts in <clears throat> awe of and um, always excited for the vocals of the supremely talented Sabrina Valentine of Seven Kingdoms. My God, can she sing her fucking burger shoe wearing ass off? Oh my God, it's insane, dude. She has. Just an incredible set of pipes on her. It's, uh, it really is astounding, man. It you really, really is. You scared me for a second there. <laughs> you scared me for a second. We're, <laughs> God damn it. Easy, easy record, easy record. No, but yeah, she, she really can sing the shit out of like anything that's put in front of her, man. Like it, it, she really, really, really elevates that band to another level as far as like, um, like, a weird, like, cult following, like you said, with, like, the burger shoes. Like, when when they hit the stage, the amount of Burger King burger crowns that I saw, like, being put on by everybody was insane. Like, I don't know how that they manifested wild. that, but, it yeah, it, it was crazy, dude. In terms of a gimmick, have it your way is a fucking pretty sick goddamn gimmick. I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm marking out, I'm asking for double pickles, and they're throwing them out to the crowd, and I'm <laughs> catching them. And, you know, I just, this is such a cool band. One of the reasons I think they get over so well is they just have such great crowd interaction um, with everyone that's there to see them. So they, they are calling out to you frequently. They're getting your arms moving. They're bringing, get your phones out. I mean, they're bringing you into the fold the same way any good metal band does. And Camden Cruz on guitars an absolute shredder. And he's complimented so well by Kevin Bird also on guitars. And, uh, but the the Bird Brothers, these these Bird Boys, you got to watch out for them because you got Kevin Bird on guitars and Keith Bird on drums. And overall, they're just they were the darlings of the two days. I really in in a stacked lineup, I really felt like they stood out um, head and shoulders above the rest. And I think they left the festival having won over anyone who hadn't previously heard them, and only getting deeper with the ones who had. Oh, I can't I can't agree with that more, man. 
Um, I have shown uh, Mrs. Franny some uh, Seven Kingdom stuff, and she you, she was well receptive to it. But yeah, after they were done, she was just like, "Yep, I love these guys. They're great." Um, she had a lot, a lot of fun with them, as did I. Um, yeah, and Camden Cruz and the Bird Boys. Holy crap, man! What an astounding trio of like a, a, a of like a band, musically speaking. These guys just crush it, both on stage and in the gym. Um, they're all pretty big fitness, uh, you know, enthusiasts. It seems like, especially Camden. My God, that guy is just fucking shredded and jacked to, you know, jacked to the hilt, man. That guy's crazy. I mean, we need some seven kingdoms like pre-workout because they are absolutely, <laughs> or I, I would love to have some crossover with maybe like an AEW. I, I don't think they're quite ready for the WWE, but if they, they could pull off an AEW tag team match, they, that's how big these boys are. And, oh yeah, you know, I don't want to belabor it, but again, Sabrina Valentine's voice is, it's just, she sounds like a siren in the Iliad trying to pull you into the rocks and crash your fucking ship. And all the while you're happy to do it because oh, yeah. the timber of her tone, it's, it's, it's really warm. She's got a, she doesn't just wail away and pierce you with high notes. She's got a warm rounded sort of sound to her voice. And, um, you know, this side of uh one eight hundred cars with kids jingle. I don't really think anyone can write songs more catchy than Seven Fucking Kingdoms. So, if you haven't checked them out, again, you you better walk away from this episode. Like my homework is to check out Seven Kingdoms now and goddamn high high spirits if time allows because yes. those are the two goddamn bands that I you know I popped over. But you know, Frenny, this whole festival was extremely um energetic with crowd interaction and we we've always we, we've always preached the importance and the power of a chant and we're such dorks we've got actual audio coverage of Hell a yeah. dod chant let's go to the floor <laughs> and i am super proud to say that a festival lineup full of what some people would consider opening bands is now the biggest festival in north america for power metal We are so cute. Mad with power! Mad with power! This is a chant started by the DOD. Soak it in because I'm here with fucking Franny Neckwrecker Day 2, and this is the result of what you get when two Druids show up tuned up. I mean, this. A cl- audio coverage of a chant adds nothing thematically to the show. I just have to take you into the fold and let you know we practice what we preach, and we are. We are pretty big fucking geeks here at the Oh, DLB. yeah, 100%, man, 100%. But, yeah, that that chant did take off, like, well, I'm not going to say what I was going to say, but it, it took off, like, <laughs> like gangbusters. <laughs> yeah, considering recent events, let's not say what that took off like, but it did yeah. blow the roof off of the building. Like, all the way up in the Illuminati level of the venue, they were cheering for it. They took they, a break were... from that adrenochrome sipping, the purple drink sipping, and they joined in. <laughs> We turned it into a wrestling arena for like one moment. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Well, Franny, before we move on, before we put a bow on things, I want to shout out to our headliners on both day one and then night two. Day one, we had seven spires, and even though even though I said to you that I want Power Glove to play a whole Disney set, Seven Spires, I just I don't I don't know a ton about them, and they do play what I would call Disney metal, so they weren't. They, I, I enjoyed them, but I don't have a ton to say. I want to focus on the bands that, that really hit us, and that would include the Night 2 headliner, Unleash the Fucking Archers, which I know you, which I know Mrs. Franny, are both diehard fucking fans for. How did they live up in your eyes? Oh, my God. They just completely destroyed it, in my uh, and Mrs. Franny opinion, uh, to be honest with you. They sounded great and i guess this was their first tour in quite a while because i believe uh britney slays their uh their lead singer uh had a child so i think she was on like a maternity leave or something like that if i'm not mistaken um but man she, again just an incredible set of pipes like really really well sung sounded really great live uh much like sabrina valentine of seven kingdoms both of these women just sounded incredible in a live setting um we got to hear some of our most favorite songs by them northwest passage through stars 
um, Apex, like they played all the hits, uh, you know, new and old. Uh, it was just a lot of fun, and I'm finally, finally glad to say that I finally got to see these guys in concert. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about their set at all. Again, it was a ton of fun. Super happy I got to see them. Um, but besides, uh, you know, the headliner of Night Two, Unleash the Archers, we cannot forget about the Lords of the Trident, the folks that are the guy, the Absolutely. boys that are putting this show Absolutely. on. They were incredibly fun i mean they like talk about crowd interaction like they were getting pops off the crowd like you wouldn't believe everybody was singing along to a lot of their songs they had a lot of uh songs that were really conducive to crowd interaction and you know call and responses and stuff like that on stage um stay tuned to the instagram we got some videos that we'll put up for uh with the uh, lords of the trident as well again just tons and tons of fun and i can't thank them enough for keeping this festival going because it was it was a great time well speaking of keeping this festival going i teased out at the onset of this episode that this would be the dawn of a dark prophecy and without burying the lead I think everyone can remember from last season, all of our longtime listeners, I've got a serious fucking issue with fellowship. I've heard him <laughs> once. I heard him a thousand times. Once is, is, is enough. All right. And I buried them so hard last year that it became a joke on the show. And when I talk about manifesting my own destiny, I think I focused a little too hard on the fellowship burying because something rather incredible, something rather dark, something rather insidious and horrible happened to me at the culmination of this festival. Franny, let's head to the floor. Probably the most disturbing moment of my metal career, but Fellowship has been announced as, I don't know if they're the headliner, how the fuck could they be the headliner of Mad with Power 7? Arguably my most disliked metal band. I mean, listen to this shit. It sounds like a fucking xylophone set to DuckTales. And the nerds around me are losing their goddamn minds. And I don't even... I cannot... I am not looking forward to hearing from Franny on this shit. Fellowship has been announced in their U.S. debut, nonetheless. Hide your kids, hide your wife. They're playing Fellowship to everybody out here. Goddamn. I uh, am fucking vindicated, baby. I am fucking vindicated. You uh, buried them. I liked them. And guess what? They're fucking coming to town, baby. Let's fucking what are the, go. You know, Franny, I had joked that I thought Fellowship had three fans, one of which was you after you discovered them. And little did I know I would attend a festival who would put me on a collision course to see this Hobbit Rock goddamn band play at a festival that I cannot avoid. So next year, you talk about long-term storytelling in wrestling. Well, we got some long-term storytelling here as I, <laughs> Neck Wrecker, who have gone on the record to say I'm not a fan of Fellowship. They have three fans. They are now headlining a festival that I have locked and loaded for next year. So this puts, <laughs> Franny, this puts me, and this is, take a shot every time I say existential on the show, but this puts me... <laughs> Into a legit existential crisis, because if I'm honest, if I'm true to the show, I have to be as subjective as I am. And this is a subjective opinion. Fellowship is, is xylophone metal. And what if over the course of the next few months, as we approach this Mad with Power 7, on my way to seeing them in person, if they win me over, I am terrified on what that means for my character development, for my character arc. I'm also scared about what it means for the integrity of this show. <laughs> Uh, just give it time, baby. It, it'll win you over, man. It'll win you over. How oh, do I remain? Man. How can I possibly talk about a festival I love with a band who I'm like, you should be roadies, and that's it. <laughs> like, if they uh, wear Burger King hats for Seven Kingdoms, it should be because they're just coming off their shift. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Oh, man. I'm not going to lie, though. When they announced fellowship you should have seen me you were still upstairs if i'm not mistaken but i was down in the pit with mrs franny and i lost my fucking mind holy crap and literally everybody else in the pit down on the floor lost it with me so there's a little bit more than three fans bruh 
I, I believe me, I'm coming to terms with how out of touch I am. Apparently, this is the direction metal is going. And I'm terrified. I feel like I'm on <laughs> I've, I'm strapped into the front of a roller coaster I shouldn't be on at this point. And there's no getting off. I'm just listening to that that track go. I'm looking at the height as I go up and I'm remembering that I did not bring a second pair of pants and fellowship is waiting for me. So, oh, you know, fuck. this is going to put the Druids to a great test. Can can this coven survive the coming storm of Hobbit Rock? We're going to find out. But I will say as we close out and we give our verdict on this festival, I really do appreciate that um, it is a do-it-yourself sort of festival. And they bring in a lot of bands who are... Um, up and coming who are making a name for themselves and magic wand magic wand will be on the on the set next year on the bill next year and i'm so excited because they are a fantastic synth heavy 80s uh set of wizards so magic wand super excited and i also really you know i someone's gender doesn't matter when it comes to being a good front person in a band and you know, metal has a lot of men as singers, and so it's really mm-hmm. cool to go to a festival where so many of the bands are fronted by a singer who happens to be a woman. And I, I, I think that if if Ty is making an intentional approach to building a bill this way, I will always fucking support it. So, with that being said, Franny, why don't we give our our final verdict on Mad with Power? And I, I know where you're gonna land on this. For me, I think I'm um I'm, I'm there's some things that are polarizing for me. I love the do-it-yourself vibe. I love how fan-friendly this festival is. And I mean, just having a slot for dinner where you can walk off and get oh some sushi. God, game changer, man. Holy buckets. Total game just changer. A fan-friendly festival. Um, I love seeing opening bands get huge slots on the bill. It's very clean and perfect. And Madison. Madison is a great fucking town. Um, lots to do. Um, so I loved a lot. I, I think... If I had it my way, I would look for a little bit more grit on the bill just because I like heavier stuff. But, um, you know, and the same thing that rocks is maybe challenging, which is opening the quote unquote opening bands by Ty's own words that they're getting huge slots, which I love. And I also want to see like a headliner who really does turn my head added to next year because they had that this year. But next year, I don't fully know who's going to headline. I want to make sure they have at least one legit heavyweight i i I agree man i agree um i i would have to echo just basically everything you said man it was a very fan friendly uh environment very clean like you said and the free play arcade machines again like it it adds it adds nothing to the show with the exception of like you know some time to kill in between bands and like during dinner breaks but still uh, ty's approach to making sure that the fans are always entertained is it it really echoes in that effect is that no matter what's going that's on, it, even if you're not a fan of the current band that's playing, you have all these arcades and pinball machines that are free play. You can still have fun and enjoy your time at the festival, even though you might not be particularly well engaged with the band that's playing. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm excited for next year, man. They, they've been doing well so far. Um, I'm excited for next year. I do agree with you though, that I would like to see a little bit more of a, maybe a heavier band per se, um, or bands rather. I am thoroughly looking forward to next year for sure. Well, Franny, uh, another festival in the books and I'm um, looking ahead, looking way ahead. Oh, the yeah. next massive festival I've got in the docket is hell's heroes in so Houston jealous. in March. <sighs> and, um, you know, I'm still, uh, pick, disaster aside i'm still hoping to see you there in in 2024 we'll see what happens Uh, but that's the next big old festival on the docket another one in the books this year with the mad with power festival and and it's been just a banner year whether it's the show whether it's with festivals the amount of bands we've seen and i'm so thankful to have you along uh droomies for the ride and so franny um i think it's time we bid adieu to the mad with power until next year and transition into um, you know, just a- another scintillating review as we always do to keep keep your listening habits informed. You're bringing us another piping hot album review, Franny. What do you got for uh, What do you got for the Coven this month? 
All right, uh, druids and drudettes. Uh, today I'm bringing a review of an album that has just completely invaded my brain. I can't get enough of this damn album. Um, it is from the purveyors of Latin jazz prog metal fusion. I'm talking about Nuclear Power Trio and their newest album, Wet Ass Plutonium. Um, so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> totally making fun of that, uh, you know, that, that other song. By that oh, one gal. oh, we can say wet ass pussy fucking slaps. That song bangs out hard. I'll be at the gym. I'm like, I might not. I'm a 40 year old white boy, and if people <laughs> yeah. knew under my headphones that not only am I crushing weights this song in a weird way, I'm like relating to it without a <laughs> pussy. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to handle that, but I'm loving it. Ba da ba ba ba. Um, but so yeah, let's just dive right into it, man. Uh, right off the bat. Um, the guitar work on display, much like the first album, is just fucking bonkers. And I'm t- it, like, from the electric guitar to the acoustic guitar, and then back to the electric guitar again. Good old Donnie T delivers more rad as fuck riffs that stick in your brain like gum to your shoe on a hot ass summer day. They are infectious. Um, f- I'm t- from the blistering, fast paced singing solos and Pay attention to the word singing on this, okay? From the singing solos to the just the hard working rhythms, it's energetic, it's fun, and I love it. I need more of it. I want all of it. I gotta have it. Let's talk vocals, okay? There are none. And the lack of vocals, for somebody that might not know about this band, the lack of vocals might throw some people off or might turn them away. Um, some people might not be into just the instrumental side of like uh, m- uh, metal. I say nay, because the guitar work in this album handles both the rhythms, the solos, and vocalizing duties with zero issues. I mean, there are parts of the song where, like, you can imagine the guitar singing, if you will, if you want to put that in your head canon. And I kind of actually like the fact that there's no vocals on this album, right? Because based solely off of the name of the track and what you're hearing, you can kind of, like, in your own in your own brain space, uh, make up lyrics or, you know, kind of develop like a theme of the song or a story of the song to, by yourself. Um, I mean, there's a thousand metal bands with totally forgettable vocals. I, I love the fact that they're an instrumental band. Ex- absolutely, man. There's, I, I feel like there's not a whole lot of solely instrumental metal bands right now. And these guys are just crushing it. They are absolutely killing it. Um, and you know, for somebody that's been indicted out the ass, like Donnie T, I don't know how he's finding the time to like, just write these riffs, but he's fucking nailing it, man. Like he is fucking killing it. Okay. Huge riffs, huge riffs, (laughs) huge, huge riffs. China's going to pay for the production. (laughs) (laughs) Oh shit. Um, and then going on to the, you know, the second member of the van. Um, so going to the bass on this track or on this album, it's, punchy as fuck vlad p just really 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 hammering at home he's not being uh outshined or outstaged by don t on guitar and i think that's really great because especially since this is just a three-piece band each member of the band gets their time to shine in their own ways um and there's plenty of spots where the bass really does take uh uh center stage and really shines I'm talking about tracks like um, Critical Bass Theory is an obvious one, very bass-heavy track, very, you know, showcases uh, the bass. Or uh, Anti-Saxers, oh my god, which has just the most sexiest fucking saxophone of all time I've ever heard on an album. Just... If Ken, they they might as well have just got like Kenny G or something like that, or was that other like uh, that saxophone guy? I can't remember his name, but you know what I'm talking about. Your mom's your mom swooned over him. Everybody's mom swooned over him. And I mean, so if, if for the uninitiated, I know you're calling out to you're calling out Vladimir and Don. If I had never heard Nuclear Power Trio, what's the fucking gimmick? Because I don't understand. Ah, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. So the gimmick here is called Nuclear Power Trio for various obvi- a very obvious reason. When you hear them, you're not going to know it. But if you watch their music videos, if you look at any of their pictures or anything like that, it is Donald Trump, former president of the United States, on guitar, Vladimir Putin, uh, current president of the Russian Federation, and Kim Jong-un, the current uh, supreme leader of North Korea. 
All of which supreme, supreme leader, <laughs> all supreme which, pizza eater. Hey man, I don't know if he listens to the show. I don't want to offend anybody. Okay. Hey, he's got he's he drastically increased the range on those ICBMs. So I, I think yeah, I the want, Eastern Seaboard is yeah. We're they're I don't not want to piss anybody off here. Um, but yeah, so that's their gimmick. They all three of them are a, a, you know a nuclear power in their own right. Hence the name Nuclear Power Trio. Getting back to the base on this album, I a lot of times I found myself frantically looking for the number of the nearest uh like battered victim uh, battered victim shelter <laughs> because the slaps from fucking Vlad's base <laughs> were so goddamn heavy. It was so good, dude. Oh man, the bass just really does like he just abuses the shit out of that bass guitar. It's insane, man. But at the same time, I feel like, like I have a little bit of like uh what's that called? Stockholm syndrome where I'm like almost defending it. Like he didn't mean it, okay? Like and I kind of liked it all You're at the same time. Starting to identify with this bassist, <laughs> starting to understand. Hey, look, he should if he didn't have to tell me twice, he wouldn't have to hit me or you know, he, he loves I me. You don't understand. I'm sensitive. I'm being too sensitive. I can't leave. My CDs are in his truck. <laughs> wow. Oh man. But yeah, the, so the bass again, incredible. Um, going to the Kim on the drums, uh, they're they're explosive as his missile test, man. I'm telling you what, like there are times where the drums like really really break out. Um, he just really knows how to handle um, going from very like technical heavy fills to just like being super in the pocket and just keeping everything just chugging along real well. Um, there are moments of this album where the, it like brings me back to like 1980s like rolling down like highway in a white lambo because they'll have like some sick ass guitar riffs with like some synthesizers coming in Ooh, it's so good man so so fucking good you know you you put all this together and the album much like the first one is just fun as hell right like i had such a good time with this album uh i've listened to it like seven times already i can't get enough of it um, but I will say that while their first album was really, really good, this is way better. And I'm not saying that that first album was bad. I did think it was really good, but I feel like this album was a huge step in their current trajectory for them. Like from top to bottom, you know, uh, musicianship to the, the, um, the composition of the tracks and everything, like it was really, really well done. And because solely because of this album, I actually had to change my rating system. So I'm no longer on the one through five Franny Pack scale. I am going to be for season two switching over through a one through ten Franny Pack scale just because there's not enough numbers uh, for me to really adequately decide on my verdicts of albums and this what a album... fucking cop out come <laughs> on the ratings mean something or they mean nothing <laughs> yeah. this album gets uh you know it gets a nine out of ten for any packs for me for the first uh review of season two this is gonna be setting a very high bar for me both in terms of how many times i listen to this fucking thing and just how good it is you know what i mean like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a high bar for season two ladies and gentlemen uh, yeah, that's all I got. Is uh, that's that is my review of Wet Ass Plutonium by the Nuclear Power Trio. Just came out this year. Make sure you guys go check it out because it is fucking sick. All right, Franny. Well, I can't uh, I can't thank you enough for the close coverage you've been giving Nuclear Power Trio from day fucking one, and also getting some interaction with them. I know you've been. Uh, we don't do a lot with our Twitter account, or I think it's now called X account. X my X account. So bizarre. Elon Musk is such a weird God. dude. Um, but uh, I, Nuclear Power Trio is a band we've been watching for a long time. I can't recommend them enough. Nuclear Power Trio, those boys got it. And um, as we look ahead, as we look ahead to episode two, season two, I just want to tease out that if you're if you're a fan of death metal that's particularly putrefied you're gonna want to stick around to next week because we have a death metal fucking fiasco for you that we're calling it came from the swamps the rise of florida death metal so next month stay stay tuned stay tight stay buckled up because we're going to be going into the floridian death metal scene which for all intents and purposes depending on where you fall on the death metal allegiance chart might just be the episode about the rise of death metal proper but next week the rise of death metal and 
looking ahead to shows. We've got Behemoth coming up. We've got Uwada coming up. We've got 200 fucking stab wounds coming up. Tons of great shows this fall. So once again, hit the like button, subscribe, head on over to our Instagram. Franny, what else do you have to say before we close out this episode? Well, uh, Druids and Drudettes, I just want to thank you again for coming back for season two. We're so happy to be doing this for you. We're so happy to have you back. Make sure you stick around because we got some fucking banger ass episodes coming up. As uh, Wrecker alluded to, it came from the swamp. It's going to be a fucking sick ass episode. Make sure you got your hip waders on because it's going to get swampy as fuck. Be ready for that. Um, and yeah, as he alluded to, tons of great shows coming up. We also got Cannibal Corpse. We got Mayhem. We got Gore Guts. We got Blood Incantation. All oh, sorts fuck. of stuff. Wow. <laughs> yeah, make, wow. make sure you make sure you're wow. ready for it, man, because it's gonna be a whiplash for the rest of the year. Um, but again, thank you so much for coming back. Make sure you like the Instagram stuff. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Leave us reviews. It helps us grow the community and get discovered by more and more druids like yourselves. And uh, yeah, make sure you stick around for the next episode of Druids of Doom. Sir, Operation Hobbit Rock is underway. Fellowship has been deployed. Good, good. Keep me appraised of any updates with the Druids of Doom, Private. This is mission critical. And Private? Yes, sir? Don't tell anybody about this. Or the fucking sleep study. You mean like your ex-wife? God damn it, Johnson. That's painful. <laughs>